We're going to bring in Ali Vaez, a senior advisor to the president and project director for Iran at the International Crisis Group. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. First, I just want to get your reaction to this attack from Iran. Many analysts thought they weren't going to go so far as to target Israel on its own territory. Absolutely. Without any doubt, a psychological barrier has been crossed. Uh, Iran has never attacked Israel in the past 45 years, uh, and so this was quite significant. But at the same time, it appears with the prior warnings that Iran had issued, uh, with the kind of weapons that they use, very slow-moving drones, uh, it wanted to minimize casualties so that this would be a response to Israeli attack on Iranian consulate in Damascus, that would not result in an all-out war in the region. And, you know, given how it's gone, what, what kind of response are we expecting to see from Israel? So it's hard to say. The reality is that both sides are now even. Uh, they can draw a line under this tit-for-tat and move on. But, uh, of course, Israel uh, it, and its current government uh, have a much more belligerent approach. Uh, and so we have to see whether they now want to retaliate by attacking Iran on its own soil. The fact that the United States has said to Israel that if it engages in offensive strikes against Iran, it's on its own. But of course, defensively, the U.S. would support Israel is a uh, important factor here. But the reality is that if Israel strikes Iran on its own soil, then another Iranian response becomes inevitable. And, and this time around, it is possible the Iranian uh, allies and proxies in the region would also engage. It's very important that in this round, Hezbollah did not enter into the fray uh, in a serious way. If it does, then we will end up really in, an, uh, in a regional war, which would be catastrophic, and we will, ha we will have no winners in the region, basically. And I know we can't predict what's going to happen, but at this point, how likely would you say it, that it is that, that we do get involved in some sort of wider regional conflict? Look, the odds, unfortunately, are uh, better than 50-50. Uh, and it's not just this one episode, because as long as the proximate cause of these tensions, which is the war in Gaza, continue, and currently uh, the uh, odds of getting a deal between Hamas and, uh, and Israel uh, do not look promising, uh, then there will be uh, further risks down the road as well, even if Israel decides not to retaliate against this specific attack. And also take into account, over the years, Israel has responded in other ways, covert operations on Iranian soil, targeting Iranian infrastructure, killing Iranian scientists and commanders on its own soil, targeting uh, military facilities. Uh, and, and of course, Israel has also gone after Iranian assets in, in Syria and even in Iraq in the past. Uh, and so the risks are plenty. Uh, and even if this episode ends uh, without any further escalation, there is still plenty of risk of escalation in the coming weeks and months. Let me jump in. This is Shirley Sitban, another journalist from France 24. I, I was wondering, um, how do you see uh, Israel being reined in by its allies, uh, calling for a moderation and not to retaliate, calling for a diplomatic solution? Uh, and we're hearing France asking its uh, nationals to, to leave to Iran, to leave Iran temporarily. How, how do you read into this? Look, uh, I think it's really good that uh, Israel's allies are trying to hold it back. Uh, but uh, the record of the past six, seven months with the Netanyahu government are not very promising. Let's remember that the United States and also Europeans put a lot of pressure on Israel uh, to improve uh, the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Uh, and those efforts were largely unsuccessful. President Biden's so-called bear hug uh, uh, to the Netanyahu government also really did not deliver the kind of results that uh, Washington had in mind. So while these efforts are promising, they're not necessarily going to stop uh, any further escalation between Iran and Israel, unfortunately. Uh, I just have one last question uh, on my part. Um, how, how do you how do you do, you know describe uh, the feeling in, among Iranians uh, today? What, what does it feel like? What what are they dreading? What are they hoping for right now in this situation? Look, it's very hard to generalize, but I think one of the reasons that the Islamic Republic decided to undertake this uh, retaliatory act was because its core constituents, which are probably around 10 to 15 percent of the Iranian population, were really itching for a response. Uh, they were very angry at the leadership, that its strategic patience and, uh, from their perspective, passivity in the face of Israeli attacks against Iranian 
uh, senior commanders and assets in the region in the past six, seven months were largely unanswered. Uh, and for a regime like the Islamic Republic, which has lost uh, a lot of legitimacy at home, that 10, 15 percent core constituency is important. But also the majority of Iranian people are sick and tired of living in a constant state of crisis and under tremendous economic pressure. They are only hoping for normalcy. Uh, and so I, I don't think they are looking forward to any further escalation. And they're hoping that this episode will come to an end as of uh, the attack uh, last night. And I want to ask you a question that I asked Shirley just a moment ago, uh, how you think this attack is going to impact the situation on the ground in Gaza and those negotiations uh, for a potential ceasefire and hostage deal? Uh, so I think I absolutely agree with what Shirley said. This is sort of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it has uh, diverted attention from what's happening in Gaza. Until a few days ago, the humanitarian situation uh, and, and the push to try to get a ceasefire were really uh, top of the agenda for all the key stakeholders, uh, but now it's how to contain these tensions with, with Iran. Israel was increasingly isolated. Today, Israel is supported by not just its allies in the West, but also uh, regional countries uh, like Jordan, who were involved in shutting down some of these uh, Iranian projectiles. Um, so it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, and also, from Hamas's perspective, uh, they, I think, now feel that probably they have wind in their sails. And remember, they when they conducted the horrible and spectacular attack on October 7th, they were hoping that this would result in a regional conflagration that would entirely change the balance of power in the region. So Hamas is now one step closer to the objective that it had in mind, and therefore probably is going to show less flexibility at the negotiating table. But this crisis also hopefully creates more momentum to try to push both sides towards a ceasefire, because as long as that crisis goes on, none of these tensions are going to be containable in the long, in the long run. And before this attack, you know, there had been growing um, energy in the United States to really rein in Israel and maybe even pull, pull some military funding. Uh, that, though, do you think that's something that's going to change because of this attack, that Israel is going to get, you know, more American support when it had been losing it? Well, it is going to be uh, politically much more uh, much more difficult uh, to try to limit military assistance to Israel. But uh, some Democrats have been talking about the possibility of limiting offensive uh, military assistance uh, and rather focusing on defensive uh, military aid uh, to Israel. And of course, we saw last night that uh, uh, the Iron Dome defense system really worked spectacularly uh, in saving lives. And I think that could be the focus of additional help, but uh, but you're right. It's it, it, now uh, the subject of Gaza uh, and has been completely overtaken uh, by these tensions between Iran and Israel. Uh, but we have to see in the next uh, uh, few days how Israel would respond, and then that would determine the uh, trajectory ahead. All right, Ali Vaez, thank you so much today for your analysis. Again, that's Ali Vaez, senior advisor to the president and project director for Iran at the International Crisis Group.